This one melted so much. Oh no! Woo! Hello everyone! Welcome to the No Borders Just Flavors Kitchen. My name is Morelli Sorbano and I will be your host. Each episode, we are going to have two immigrant jewels competing with a recipe that matches the episode's feature category. I, along with a special guest, will be choosing a winner for the cook-off. And y'all, I wonder what our amazing chefs are going to be making today. Y'all are ready to meet our chefs? Let's do it! My name is Estefania, I live in Austin, Texas, and I was born and raised in Guayaquil, Ecuador. My name is Yassine. I live in Austin, Texas, and I grew up in Cairo, Egypt. My family immigrated here in 2014. Welcome, you guys. I hope that you guys are excited because I am so ready to try your food. The category for the day is rice in a pot, and you will have 90 minutes to surprise me with your recipes. You also will have two game play buttons. The dance all button can actually make one of the two of you dance for each other while the other one finish cooking their dish, and the team board button can make them go to your side and help you for three minutes with your dish. I think it's time to meet our influencer. She is a food content creator. Let's meet Hannah. When I saw Hannah walk through the door, in my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, is that Hannah from TikTok? I can't believe I'm in the same room as her. <laughs> I'm just hoping that she'll be nice. <laughs> hey, Hannah, so nice to have you here. Thank you guys for having me. I'm super excited to eat all the good food that I know is coming our way. Yes, definitely. Well, are you all ready? Let's just start this countdown. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the most stressed I've ever put on an apron. I had a whole plan of what I needed to do exactly in what order, and then all of a sudden, and my mind just goes blank. Okay, you guys, you still have 90 minutes. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. So, what are the dishes that you guys are making? It's called seco de pollo. Mm. Okay. Seco means dry in Spanish, but this dish is not dry at all. I decided to be a part of this cook-off because I was feeling lonely here in Texas. I wanted my fellow Ecuadorians to feel included in something like a cooking show. This is actually my own recipe, so um, my parents don't really cook. So I'm actually adding a twist of this to make it my own. But I don't want to give too much away. So I'm making kushari with a twist. Ever since we moved to Texas, I'd been eating a lot more Mexican food. We didn't really have that too much in Egypt. I noticed that there were a lot of similarities in flavors. Like for example, Jamaica is exactly the same as something we drink back in Egypt, especially during Ramadan. It's called karkade. Since I started noticing the similarities in, in foods between Egypt and here, uh, I've wanted to start a restaurant or maybe a food truck that's Egyptian and Tex-Mex fusion. So how do you guys start cooking? I started because of my grandmas when I was a little kid. I think they got me in the kitchen early, just baking with them, making cakes and cookies. We have a lot of holidays in uh, Islam that you know, come with their own desserts. And since then, I think I fell in love with the magic of being able to, to feed people, to give them the energy and fuel that keeps them going for another day. I moved back home from Ecuador to the USA. And when I moved here, I had to learn how to cook. And I would just like call my mom and be like, can you please tell me how to make the chicken soup? So basically I just learned to cook while calling my mom. When I moved to the USA, I started to miss my country. <laughs> I started to miss my food. I started to miss my people. Nowadays, I just try to cook as many recipes as I can possibly do. <laughs> and that way I feel a little bit closer to home. Oh, that's really cute. Thank you for sharing. No, you're very welcome. Okay, one hour left. <sighs> <laughs> Man, everyone was warning me that this thing doesn't heat up fast mm -hmm. enough, but now it's too hot. <laughs> I gotta rein it in. Yours is, oh, I, I forgot to turn mine on. <laughs> I got told that I had to turn on the, the heat for my little electric stove, and I think I completely forgot as I was really nervous. Oh, the rice is finally going. I think 
Everything smells so good. Stop the hair. It doesn't fit. Oh, you have a teamwork button. True. Do you want to use it on that? Oh. Okay, okay. Well, that was easy. Um, Best use of co-op oh, time. Can you also take out the chicken for me? And can you maybe help me with the cutting board? Get the cutting board for you? Yeah. Okay. I don't like touching the chicken that much, so I figured I could just make Jessine do the work for me. Like, but like, what's stopping me right now from making this the worst cut chicken ever? Like, I could just make this terrible for you. Are you trying to sabotage me? I mean, you gave me the perfect opportunity. They were just saying how important this chicken is. All right, guys, you have like a really good flow going on. Just to let you know, you have 40 minutes left. Oh my okay. god. Okay. No pressure. No, no, no pressure. Do <laughs> no. you know what time it is, though? Dancing in the Just Flavors kitchen is actually a little bit embarrassing. I could have made a fool out of myself, but you know what? I was just like, just moving like this, like I usually do back home. <laughs> Be prepared for it. Oh, thank you. Oh, that made me sweat. Break. <laughs> you know, I'm still getting my breath back, but that was fun actually. I think it got some, some tension out. I'm seeing avocado being used. Is this part of your Tex Mex? Yeah, yeah. So this is not oh. traditional at all. Just adding it because uh, it needs something fresh. You guys have 15 minutes left. You like my burner just like. Stopped. It's unplugged. Oh my god. It's just that's why the, the water hasn't been boiling. I would just swap them at this point. Yeah. If your onions are almost done. Kosheri is a complicated dish with a lot of layers and a lot of components. And honestly, I kind of take that for granted. I forget all the time how many things go into it. I wasn't even really taking that into account with all the burners I have. That's not fair, you know? There, there's no pressure, but there is less than 10 minutes. There's still a the lot not used. Yes. So can you please put the rice okay. on top of okay. So you know, just make it nice like that. Okay. Okay. You know, there's not much space. She's kind of working in a little small corner. She's gonna get back and only have five minutes left to finish up her plate. Yes. You can just pick up the sauce. Okay, that's fine. Five minutes left. <laughs> 
Let's take it boiling now. I'm trying to get the avocado, my main ingredient, in the dish and trying to make it look nice. And I'm just squeezing a little harder and all of a sudden it just explodes. <laughs> oh no, I got a one too. I'm so sorry. No. no, we've been joking about being a little competitive and all, but the last thing I ever want to do is hurt someone else's chances of winning. Justin is finally making some progress on plating his dish. Making me nervous for them, but it's about to be time. Two minutes. Justin, how was it? You know, I had a few roadblocks there, but the pieces are all right in front of me now. They had a really hard, hard time. It seemed like in the beginning, Justin was way up in the head, and Stephanie was behind, and then it kind of turned the other way. But now they're back on track and working on their plating. Sixty seconds left. Oh my gosh. I'm just scrambling, trying to get everything perfect and ready for the judges. I've had a lot go down already, and so I just don't want to mess things up anymore. Ten, nine, eight, seven. In the final 10 seconds, the only thing that goes to my mind is, oh my gosh, I need to finish plating. I need to make sure the edges are clean. Six, five, four, three, Two, one, time's up. Now is the time that we're all been waiting for. Let's try your dishes. Jasim, let's just start with you. All right. Hi. So, Hi. here you go. Mm, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Here you go. Enjoy. Today I made for you my home dish, koshari, but with a little bit of a Tex-Mex twist. The dish itself is rice, vermicelli, lentils, macaroni, chickpeas, fried onions, and uh, I seasoned the chickpeas, which isn't normal. It's not traditional, but I added some uh, Mexican spices as well to give it some flavor. I brought with me my grandma's cookbook, actually. My grandma's left this for me a couple years ago, and even though this, this recipe isn't from there, it definitely took a lot of notes from there, and they've taught me so much that this is what reminds me of them and reminds me of home, and it means a lot to me because they you know, this is a huge history of, you know, Egyptian cooking that I got to keep with me and carry on the legacy. But I also wanted to add something of my own and make it my own. So that's why after moving to Texas, after wanting to kind of incorporate my Egyptian and American identities together, I made this as kind of the, the main dish of the Egyptian Tex-Mex restaurant that I, I would love to open someday. Thank you so much, Yasin. Thank you. I hope you enjoy. I have prepared for you this traditional Ecuadorian dish called seco de pollo. Um, it's made out of tomato, onion, pepper, and chicken. Additionally, with fried plantains with some cheese grated on top, and just some rice with this uh, seasoning called achote. Back when Ecuador was about to be colonized, and we had the English people come to Ecuador, and you know how they have appetizers and entrees, and you know dessert. In Ecuador, we don't really have that. So the uh, English people were telling Ecuadorian people like, okay, where's the second, second? But since Ecuadorian people don't know much English overall, they were like, okay, second, second de pollo. So it, that's how I got the name seco de pollo. It's kind of funny. <laughs> and I actually brought in a little picture that I wanted to share with you guys. And this is my mom. This is my grandma, her name was Commanda. And I made this dish because it's a dish that I know my mom likes to make for us. And then it was a dish that I would eat sometimes at my grandma's house. I don't have much pictures of my family because they're all back home in Ecuador. But this is the one that my grandpa gave me when I left. And I just cherish it with me. And I know my mom is proud of me. And then that my grandma is also very proud of me. If, I know she's probably looking over me right now. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your story. No, I'm sure that they me. both are so proud of you. You did an amazing job. Now it's time for us to make a decision. Thank you. 
Me and our amazing guest, Hannah, have made a final decision to announce the winner. But first, I want to say, Immigrant Food is so diverse and amazing, and you guys both did an amazing job. We are so proud of you guys. It was a really hard decision. To help amplify immigrant voices is to try foods from different cultures, get out of your comfort zone, and I think most people would be surprised uh, by the, just the amount of diversity that they can taste. So that's my biggest thing is just to try some food. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. That is an amazing message. But that being said, our winner for the cook-off is... The moment where Moralisa and Hannah are about to announce the winner, the lights are flashing, we're at our stations, and it's all happening so fast. In that moment, my anxiety came back, and I didn't know what to think. Our winner is... Estefania! I can't wait to tell my mom about this. You guys both did an amazing job. Thank you so much. I would like to hear a couple words that you have for our immigrant youth. Honestly, I would just like to say that we are capable of anything that we actually set our minds to. It's a really, life is really hard, but if you find comfort in your friends and your family, no matter what they are, I'm pretty sure you can get to anywhere that your heart wants you to be. From this experience, I'm walking away with a lot of new friends, a lot of new connections, a lot of new insight on another people's cultures. Thank you so much. I would love to hear some words from you, Jessine. So yeah, what I would say to everyone out there is don't let anyone tell you you don't belong. Wherever you're from, wherever you end up, let that be a part of your story. Take that with you and allow it to make you even more unique because you're the only person who can be you. So just be yourself. Thank you so much. That was very beautiful. Thank you, both of you guys. Thank, Thank you, you, Hannah. Thank you. Okay, now it's my favorite part. I'm taking this one home. <laughs>